Hi everyone, this is Adventure4904. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'd like to share with you on how I create my Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 videos. I make photorealistic cities and most interesting places on earth video tours on my channel, as you can see on my screen here. To find the locations and point of interest of a particular location, I use Google Earth. And I came across a very useful and valuable tool called Little Nav Map, which I use to create my flight plans. I'd like to show it to you and how I use it, and let's get into it. So my next video for most photoelectric cities, I've chosen Copenhagen in Denmark. So let's open up Google Earth and let's look at Copenhagen. So I just have to do a search here and let's type Copenhagen. Right, so this is the city of Copenhagen here. So I found out that Copenhagen is one of the one of the cities which is photorealistic inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I just want to do around uh, maybe a, a flight round to have a look at how the city looks like in Flight Simulator. So what I will, I will do is I will look for an airport nearby the city so I can take off from there and fly around. Okay, so I've identified an airport which is close to the city. So it's there's this airport over here. I've chosen this airport to take off from. And the runway I've chosen from is actually runway 04 right. So we'll take off on the runway and we will head down to the city and look around. So to choose the places that I want to uh, point out in Copenhagen or the interesting points in Copenhagen, I also use the Google Earth to find out interesting points. So what I'll do is I'll maybe click on one of the uh, areas which are actually um, interesting enough. Let's go and have a look at this place called Castellet, I think, okay, and I will add that to my project and I can also let, click on people also explore and then they'll give you the other choices of all the interesting points inside or interesting places inside of Copenhagen. Okay, Frederick's Church is one of them. So what I've done is I've done this prior to this. So I'll open up my project, which is under this area here under project. So I've, I've chosen Copenhagen and I've chosen all these areas here, which you can see in yellow. These are all the interesting places in Copenhagen that I found out, which are you know quite interesting to, to probably fly over. So one of it is the airport, which is uh, Copenhagen Airport, and then we'll go down to this national aquarium in, uh, in Denmark. It looks kind of interesting from here, so I just want to probably do a flyover on that. And then we'll go down to the city, there are a couple of interesting stuff. And if you know, know that the Copenhagen is actually well known for the Little Mermaid, the statue that we have in uh, Copenhagen, that's located over here. The little mermaid's over here, right? You can see it does. It's not. It doesn't really does resemble much, but at least we know where she is, or the statue is at least. So once we have done that, what I will do is I will save this as a project inside of Google Earth. These are all my places that I go to, so I don't lose them after this. I will have to plan of how am I going to fly over these locations. So if I take off from runway zero four right. So I'll probably cross over to the National Aquarium first and then fly over to the north, which is the Bakken or Bakken. It's actually an amusement park here. So it'd be nice to see that from the top. Um, amusement park and then we will fly down. We'll take a U-turn and we fly down back to Denmark's Aquarium, um, the Experimentrium and so on here. We'll go through and create the flight plan okay so uh, once i've done this i'm gonna now open up little nav map so if you just google little nav map 2.6.1 beta release it's actually meant for microsoft flight simulator 2020 you can download this from here right for windows you can download and then uh, start using it so it's an awesome software so let me run this and i will show you how i create my locations okay so this is little nav map which i have actually changed the positions of the windows around but when you first install it, it's going to be like this. So if you go to Windows and um, choose Reset Window Layout to Default, this is how it's going to look like when you first install it. Okay, let's try, let's use that uh, so you can be familiar with the interface at least. So you have a couple of windows which you can move around. If you look at this uh, little dots here, you can actually uh, change the size of the windows or panels, we call it. We have a search window. We can search for the airports. We have a flight planning routes here, all your waypoints. We have a profile over here and then we have it if it's connected to microsoft flight simulator it's going to show you over here so let's create a new 
uh, flight plan from this one because I've done this before I've done this prior to this uh, this is my flight plan for Copenhagen but let me just close in and start a new one for you guys so you can have a look at how I do it from scratch so file let's uh, open uh, let's create a new flight plan this is how we can do it okay so I found out that the Copenhagen Airport the I the IKO um, code is actually Echo Kilo Charlie Hotel the Copenhagen Airport so let's go to the search area here just punch in echo kilo charlie hotel then you press enter on your keyboard and this is the airport that you're going to come to so you can see uh, 04 right is over there not only that you can have uh, you can also look by searching for the airport name the city and all that stuff so once you have got that you can see the airport over here right and you can find the information about the airport and all that over here so once I've done the search, the airport appears here so I can zoom out and I can start plotting in the areas I want to fly to. Uh, before that, if you want to find that information about the airport, all is over here under the airport and the nav aids, the air spaces, the user points, information here. You can see that you have uh, runways, uh, the communication frequencies, the procedures that you have at the airport and the nearest runway to it. I suggest that you explore this when you install it so you can have a look at all the information that you can find for a particular airport so let's plot in the waypoint so we can start making our flight plan the first one i would like to you to do is right click on the airport the castrop airport here and then choose set airport as a departure right set airport castrop as a departure so you click on it now it has been set as a uh, departure here and the first place that i want to fly to is actually if i open up my google earth again I'm going to dock this to the left and I'll drag this to the right. So what I've done is actually I have changed the layout. So I saved a layout for my own use, which I can change and I save the layout. So I will just go to the layout, which I like, which is the map center layout, which I made on my own. So I can see the map at the bottom and the rest of it at the top and bottom. I mean, I can see the map in the middle. Right. So uh, according to Google Maps that I've created earlier, uh, after takeoff, We'll be flying to the National Aquarium of Denmark. Just fly over on that side. So that's located over somewhere around here. Which is, that's the one. Okay. So what you do is you can right click on the area and then you just choose a pen position to flight plan. Okay. You get your first waypoint. You'll get an area here. I'll talk about this once we finish the waypoints. So once you do that and then let's fly off to what was the other one? Um, Bakken or Bacon. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. It's actually a amusement park uh, up in the north. So let me see if I can uh, find it here. Okay, so this is the place that we are going to arrive at. So this is going to be our waypoint number two. So I'm going to do a right click somewhere near the place, which is this uh, uh, the amusement park over here. So I'm going to right click and I say a pen position to flight plan. That's waypoint number two. And I'm going to do a U-turn. So I'm going to just fly around here. Maybe it's going to be our, our third waypoint which is we're going to just make a U-turn down back to the city. And the other waypoint that I found out was the Denmark Aquarium. So that's about somewhere around here, right? You can see this little, um, what's this? This looks like a race course or a stadium or something. So that's the uh, Denmark Aquarium. So I'm going to just do a flyby over on the left-hand side. So we'll create another waypoint, which is going to be waypoint number four, and so on and so forth, right? So when you find all the places that you have you liked, just save it for for us to open up in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, populate the flight plan, and I'm, I'm going to open up and show it to you the, the the one that's ready for for us to use. Okay, so I filled up all the waypoints for this flight plan. You can see that we have several. We have a total of about 25 waypoints. The what I didn't didn't show you the last part is actually quite interesting. That if you can uh, come back to the airport and do a right click, you can say to create an approach to Castro. So if I do click on that, you can see that I have, I can have a choices of the runway I can land at. In this case, I'm going to land back the same runway, which is 04 right. And here you have the entry distance to the runway threshold, which is what automatically set for three nautical miles. And the altitude that I want to enter into the port is going to be 1000 feet. So if I press OK, you can see the approach slope here is at 3.1 degrees. It'll give you this nice approach into the runway from where we ended up with our last waypoint, which is going to be here. I'm going to do a left and then arrive and land at 04. So once you've completed the waypoints, you will get an elevation data at the bottom here. It will also give you the minimal altitude you need to fly throughout the uh, the flight. But once we have finished, we have completed the end-to-end, the -end, have completed the route. 
you will be given this profile so if this doesn't pop up at all you will need to go to tools under options you will have to go under the cache and files area you will have to download this globe data this uh, the globe data for your uh, for the elevation and I've done so and I've uh, installed it into my e drive here and it's actually an offline globe elevation data use that if you don't have this you will not get the globe elevation and you get some errors download that it's actually from this link over here and install it and tell it where it is you have to download the all 10g.zip file so once you've done that you will get this globe information here you can see that you can actually change your altitude of how high you want to fly during your flight so if I change it to 2000 here 2000 feet you see my elevation here has changed the profile has changed so I can I'll be flying so that's going to be my top of climb and then I've got top of descent over here it's going to tell you exactly where you're going to start descending since it's telling me it's a minimum of 1005 I'm going to try and fly as low as possible so I can see the site the scenery nicely okay see the nice scenery so I'm going to put a 1005 that's the minimum altitude we can fly and then you can see here all your profile is all done it's quite simple and it's very useful or it's very easy to use uh, although it looks intimidating first but uh, once you get the hang of it it's kind of simple to use or easy to use and it's very useful for if you're doing some visual flights or VFR flights so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this flight plan um, I'm going to go to file and I'm going to say save flight plan I'm going to also save one for Microsoft Flight Simulator let's go to file export flight plan as MSFS plan PLN yeah click on that it will automatically populate the name of the airport for you so we are flying from VFR Kestrup Echo Kilo Charlie Hotel to Kestrup Echo Kilo Charlie Hotel okay and then you can save it on top of it so I'm going to just press save there and that flight seems already exists because I've done it before I'm going to just press no for that okay I'm going to cancel that but that's how you save the flight plan so the next thing is we're going to jump into flight simulator I'll be back in the chiffy so here we are in Microsoft flight simulator let's load up our flight plan and uh, have a look at it yeah so I'm going to click on the world map here so at the bottom here we have the load and save button click on that and let's click on load and let's jump back to our flight plans and I've saved one called the VFR Kestrup EKCH2 Kestrup EKCH plan press open and our flight plan will be loaded there you go right so that was a flight plan that was that came from little nav map with all the waypoints for this flight I want to choose the um, Cessna okay I'm going to choose Cessna and then I'm going to make sure that we have a nice um, condition of flight I'm going to choose few clouds press close and that's it right we all set up click on fly they have given us runway 30 but no, no worries I want to take off from 04 right but they've given us 30 that's fine it's okay we can still uh, navigate to the waypoint so let's have a look at where we are at the moment so that's where we are at the moment we have everything set up for what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the altitude here we're gonna fly to about 1500 feet so we can switch on the autopilot right after takeoff all right so let's go flying that's 55 let's take off so this is the uh, Copenhagen airport flaps up and I'm going to go into autopilot now I'm going to use, use the keyboard shortcut alt Z and I'm going to switch to the nav so control N on the keyboard for it to start maneuvering for you so we're going to fly up to 1500 feet and let the aircraft take you uh, to the waypoints so in this case I can actually open up uh, my map to show you that we are actually flying to the, the, the waypoints okay, if you notice I've opened up little nav map here you can see that actually we are tracking the aircraft is actually just flying to uh, the first waypoint which is going to turn left in a bit so it goes to the wave for uh, TOC is going to be here and uh, let me just try and make this as sm small as possible normally I put this on the second monitor so I can uh, view what's going on it's the best way to do it but just to show you that uh, the aircraft will follow the navigation so we first waypoint is actually left so because we took off from Romeo 30 but actually you can see that we are flying towards the uh, it's turning to the left now and we'll be reaching top of climb in a bit so now we have reached 1500 I'm going to slow the aircraft down uh, let's uh, turn on the altitude which is uh, control T to switch the altitude to about 1500 
Okay, so let's go outside and have a look at how Copenhagen looks like. So we're going to be flying to our next waypoint, which is going to be the the amusement park, which is on the north of the city. And you can see that the, actually the aircraft is flying towards the, the, the waypoint. And it will do so automatically from now onwards. Okay, it will take you right down back to the airport where you can line up for runway 04 right and land the aircraft uh, manually. So that's it. That's how I do it. I use the little nav map to create my flight plan and I use the autopilot to take the aircraft around so I can have a look at the city from here while I'm, whilst I'm recording the screen. I hope this was useful for you. Please like and subscribe for more tutorials and MSFS videos. Do let me know in the comments if this has helped you in any way. So I'll see you soon and happy flying.